Hi everyone, Happy New Year. I hope that you guys had a wonderful holiday season. Um, I have just gotten back from my home in the province of Marinduque. So um, traditionally, that's where my partner and I always spend the New Year. So I was actually planning to do some vlogging while I was there, but unfortunately the weather was not very nice. It was raining all day, all week. So um, it proved futile. So I did vlog about like you know what I do there. Um, last year so if you're interested to see what I do there I'm gonna put the link down on the description box for that but anyway so I'm glad that I'm back here now and it's also good timing because I have with me the traditions holiday trio from Sonia G yay now um, this is a limited edition and I think it's no longer available on Beachlish and um, well, I know that it's like not fruitful to show you guys something that can't be bought anymore, but at least maybe it can serve as maybe uh, some sort of like insight into different types of brush heads because the hairs that are used on these trios is very different and that's the main reason why I decided to get this. It's because of the natural bristle fibers that they use in this trio so i'm going to talk about that a little bit later in the video okay now there was also actually another brush that i was very interested in getting from sonia g um, it was her mount fuji brush with the holder um i was very uh, the main reason i was very interested in that is because of the dyeing technique that was used to add that very nice you know orangey brown color at the tips of the bristles um, because they use persimmon dye for that so it's a very traditional form of dyeing technique in hiroshima but unfortunately, as I've said in previous videos before, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm going to be sounding repetitive, uh, but there's actually a um, spending cap for customers here from the Philippines when you order for the Beautylish. And since that limited edition brush actually retailed for $185, I think, so um, that couldn't I, I couldn't buy that just because of the limitation of the spending cap because I am only allowed $180 dollars maximum um, in one order in Beautylish but um, for I'm so lucky that with the holidays trio um, this retailed only for $140 so I was actually able to get it and I'm just so glad that um, I have it and I think it's going to be a good addition into my brush kit so let's get into the traditions holiday trio so this is how the brushes look like under the sun. As you guys can see, the lacquering here has a reddish brown tint, which looks very elegant. Now the handles here are made of kiyaki wood, which is the same type of wood used in the Sonya G Mini Kiyaki set. And um, the difference here is that the handle design, it actually like you know thickens as it nears the base of the brush. Now, of course, we can still see the Sonya G logo and the kanji characters for Kumano Fude on the opposite side. And of course, the Japan stamp is still here. And the ferrules are matte black and what makes this brush set special is actually the different types of hair that is used on the brush head. The smallest brush amongst the trio is the S1 and that is the brush that you can see here. And as you guys can see the brush head here is very small and it is made of yellow Canadian squirrel. Now the ferrule is crimped here so this gives the brush head this flat appearance. And if I put the pad of my fingers here you can see the like you know I call it the half moon design. And um, if I put it to the side we can still we can see the slight fullness of the belly and it kind of like tapers into a much more sharper point at the very like you know middle of the tips of the brush head. Now I can actually say that there's a certain type of resiliency to this brush and there's a certain spring back so it kind of like um, springs back into shape uh, which is actually very remarkable for me because it's a very soft brush head. So I'm just playing around with the brush head here trying to feel it and we can see that it's actually very soft and the length of the brush head here is actually longer than most of the detail brushes that I have. Um, in my collection. So I think this is going to be a very great addition. Now this brush here is the S2 brush and this is described as a lay down brush. And the crimp on the ferrule here um, is the one that gives this flat and rounded brush head design. And the brush head here is also made of yellow Canadian squirrel, which is actually very luxurious in feeling. Now the belly here has some fullness, which will give some resiliency to the core of this brush head which is very important because after all like you know if i'm just going to push the brush head here we can see how soft um this is 
and um, as I'm pressing it, we can see that the brush head um, uh, doesn't splay out much, which is, which is actually great because um, this will be very good to use when you are being very directional with your eyeshadow makeup application. But I can also see that with a little bit of some pressure, the brush head um, bends a little bit out of shape. So we know that this brush head will follow the natural contours of your eye. And this will also give this brush uh, some blending ability, which is actually great. And the last brush that we have here is called the S3 brush. And this is the blending brush in the trio. Now the ferrule here is actually round and this is what gives gives the brush head this design. So it's actually very erect as you guys can see here and it has a very nice rounded brush head shape especially if you look at it from the top. But I can say it's a little bit tapered as it nears the tips of uh, the bristles and it's still very, very remarkable to me how this white Canadian squirrel brush head is actually very soft but also very resilient at the same time and it feels very very luxurious on the palms of my hands. So I'm actually very excited to try this out. Now the S1 from the Traditions Holiday Trio looks like a definer brush to me and it actually reminds me of the Hakuhodo S144 brush which I am putting it uh, here so that we can compare it and we can see that there's a slight difference in the length of the brush head and also there's a slight difference in the fullness of the belly between these two brushes and of course there's a slight difference between the shape of like you know the tips of both of these um, brushes and if um, I could compare these two to another definer brush of sorts it's going to be the Sonia G flat definer brush and I'm gonna put that here uh, so that we can compare it and as you guys can see um, automatically we can see that the brush head of the flat definer is thicker in width in, compar in comparison to these two. Now to the touch the S1 is way smoother um, in comparison to that of, let's say, the um, Sonia G flat definer brush here, because this one is a little bit strong in the belly, so it's a much more, this will give a much more directional application of color. Now the S144 here has almost the same type of softness, even if this is made of tamage hair, but I do have to say that the S1 from the Traditions Holiday Trio is actually silkier in feel than the Hakuhodo S144. Now the S2 brush here um, to me looks like a worker brush and I'm going to put the worker one brush right beside this so that we can see um, the similarities between these two brush heads. They almost have the same brush head design but they just have a slight difference in the brush head length um, but like you know also in the fullness of the belly the worker one will be fuller than the S2 and even like you know the tips of the bristles here they're almost the same but if there's one brush that the S2 reminds me of it is actually the Hakuhodo S132 brush which I'm gonna put here and this one is made of weasel hair by the way and um, of course there's a very slight difference in terms of brush head length um, but again we can see the brush head design they're actually very similar and the only main difference between these three brushes is like the fullness of their belly being like the worker one has the most fuller belly than the other two of course the worker one will pick up more pigment um, in comparison to uh, the other brushes that i have here in my hand and um if there's one thing um all of them feel very very soft and there's also a nice snap back um, especially between the S2 and the S132 brush and um, like you know they're very comparable in comparison to that of the worker one brush so um, I do have to say though that the S2 brush here is still feels very superior in terms of smoothness and silkiness between the other brushes that I am holding and the final brush that we're going to compare to other brushes is the S3 brush and this is the blending brush and it is fairly comparable to the Fusion Eye Blender brush and as you guys can see here the brush heads have almost the same brush head design in terms of like you know how erect both of them are and even like you know the shape of the brush head if you if you look at them at from this angle it's both very round but I think uh, the S3 brush here has a much more tapered kind of a brush head design but again it's actually still very very soft um, in comparison to that of the Fusion Eye Blender brush. Um, both of them feels very soft to the touch and um, they have a nice snap back but because like you know the Fusion Eye Blender has a mix of fibers 
the S3 brush here will have a much more superior quality and feel in comparison to that of the um, Fusion Eye Blender. Now, um, if there's one thing that I want to compare the S3 brush to, it's actually to the Chikahodo F07 brush. And I can fairly say that the F07 brush here is like the baby sister of the S3 brush in terms of brush head shape and size. Because if we just like, you know, take a look at it from a much more different angle, uh, we can see how these brushes almost taper in the same manner. Um, because the F07 here from Chikohodo like has a nice point here in the middle. But the Chikohodo F07 brush here is not as soft and silky as the S3 brush from Sonia G. So the main appeal of me getting the Traditions Holiday Trio set is actually the different types of bristles used in the brush head. So we have white Canadian squirrel and we have yellow Canadian squirrel. Now basing on like you know just touch alone, I can see that um, or feel that the yellow Canadian squirrel brushes, um, there's a certain type of snapback um, that happens. So there's a certain strength to it, but there's a very nice silky softness that I can feel. Now, um, like, you know, even in, I'm just like, you know, brushing it here on my eyes, I don't feel any prickling sensation at all. And, um, I think that these types of squirrel brushes, like you know the yellow Canadians, are much more softer and silkier in feel in comparison to let's say a um, pine squirrel um, brush head because I can feel some, not coarseness, well that's just like you know the thing that I can best describe the brush head, um, you know the way that the brush head feels of a pine squirrel um, brush. but. Um, it's still very soft, I do have to say, but um, the yellow Canadian squirrel is just softer and silkier to the touch. So if you're looking for something not as soft as like, let's say a blue squirrel or a gray squirrel, but not as like, you know, strong and tough as a pine squirrel, having a yellow Canadian squirrel brush heads um, in your collection is going to be helpful for you. Now this, is also very amazing to me just to feel it and this is the white Canadian squirrel brush and there's also a certain strength that I can say um, this brush head possesses and it's not as soft as let's say a blue squirrel or a gray squirrel and um, I mean and I guess maybe that's why um, this brush head is designed this way because if it was any like you know fluffier than most traditional round dome top um, blending brushes I think the brush is not going to be very effective because again as we guys can see it's a very soft brush head and designing this in this way um, can give it the ability to actually like you know blend out colors and as you guys can see when I'm just like you know rubbing the brush head here on my like you know socket line area you can see that it can actually be quite directional to a certain degree, but it's actually ev able to splay out a bit. So that will enable us to blend out the colors nicely on the eyelids. And again, if you have sensitive eyes, this is a nice brush to use because it's actually very soft. It's not pressing hard onto your skin and it's not pulling on your skin and it's also not prickly. So um, that's the main difference that I see um, between like you know the other squirrel brushes that I have in my collection and like you know just playing around with this and then although um, I do have to say I don't have like you know a yellow Canadian squirrel face brush or a white Canadian squirrel face brush I don't know um, to what certain extent um, they perform when they are in a much more bigger um, brush head size but so far um, I can say that um, I think this will work extremely well um, for this um, size of brush head on a makeup brush. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play around with these brushes with eyeshadows. Alright so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using some of my new eyeshadow palettes from Lisa Eldridge. I'm sure you guys have seen me talk about this in a previous vlog and maybe I'm going to pair it with my Chanel um, Claire Obscure Le Cat Ombre. Like, you know, just to see how these brushes will pick up different types of uh, formulas. And I'm also interested maybe of using um, maybe some colors from the Tisse Cambon 
um, also from Chanel because some of them here are actually baked gelée formulas and we all know how difficult it is to pick up pigments from baked gelée formulas and also maybe I might be using some colors from the myth palette but who knows I'm just going to be playing around um, as we go along. Oh, by the way, before I continue, the Traditions Holiday Trio actually arrived in a packaging like this with like, you know, this is very nice, like some sort of like washi paper with very nice, like, you know, wave patterns here, which is very typical um, in Japanese um, clothing and textile, like maybe in kimonos and in um, obi belt. So you see this. And of course, we have the Sonaji logo sticker here. And all of the three brushes also came with their Komano Fude seal. But it they look um, very different from most um, Komano Fude seals that um, comes with most brushes. They're longer now, so I don't know if they're changed into this way, if this is a much more um, recent reiteration of the Komano Fude seal. But it's so nice to know that this is actually made in Kumano, especially for us who are fans of Kumano Fude. And they all typically arrived in um, the um, Vitalish box. So I did an unboxing of this trio, by the way. So I, I think I posted it a few days ago before I actually put this video out. But anyhow, I digress. Let's go back into the eyeshadow application. All right, so what I want to do first is I want to apply a base color. And maybe I'm going to use this color here from the Clair Obscure uh, palette of Chanel. Oh, and I can see it's a quite a strong brush head because, like, you know, when I was just like um, rubbing it on the pan here, you can see that it's actually disturbing um, the the formula of the pans, which is great. So with, to me, this means that this brush head has a certain strength to it that's actually able to pick up color and to load it on the brush head. And I can actually see that it's actually delivering a very nice hint of color all over the eyelid. Very pretty, feels very, very soft on the eyes. Maybe let me add some color here. I'm not using any eye base also today because I want to see fully how well these brushes like you know apply and deliver color pigment into the eyelids without using any other products okay so with the same brush i'm going to be picking up this color here from the muse palette i love this um, palette from lisa eldridge i think it's actually very sweet and it looks like you know they're like flowers in bloom during spring and i do have to say that the S number two? Yeah, I can't remember the names. Okay, so this is the S number two brush and it's actually applying a very nice gradation of color on the eyelid. And it's also actually very easy to maneuver um, on the lids. Again, I'm just being quite um, instinctive about my color application and I'm able to pat in the color to build intensity, which I actually like. And I'm also able to blend it out into my socket line. And I'm also able to create a directional kind of eyeshadow application because after all, I need to create a lift always on my eye when I'm going to apply eyeshadow. Now, so far what I'm observing is that the brush head of the S2 is able to apply color very nicely. It's also able to help you build up the color very nicely. Now I don't know if that's also like a good pairing with the eyeshadow palette from Lisa Eldridge because Lisa's eyeshadows are actually very easy to apply and to blend out. Because again like you know with squirrel makeup brushes uh, there's a certain limitation that happens because you can't really pick up a ton of pigment and sometimes there's a challenge of blending out colors but so far I am not having an issue with that today at all. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the Claire Obscure palette from Chanel and I'm going to pick up this color here. And I'm using the S1 brush. This is the smaller brush along among the Holiday Trio. And I'm going to use this. Wow! I was not expecting this brush to pick up this ton of a pigment. And let me just remove some of the excess here at the back of my hand. 
and let me just try to blend this up but then again like you know this color from the Chanel palette is a matte color so I'm actually quite surprised on how well this brush picked up the pigment okay so I'm gonna add whatever is left of the pigment here on my upper lashes just so that we can have more definition like you know I'm just being carefree with a pigment application I'm just running it across my lash line and trying to smoke it out a bit wow I was not expecting that at all with this brush so um, it's just a little bit way too much for me so let me get another brush that I could use to buff out the edge okay so let me get the F07 brush okay hmm. no just by you know this experience I think these brushes especially these two the S1 and S2 if you have matte eyeshadows and you want to use matte eyeshadows with like a full impact of color these two brushes are going to be great to use and so far I'm not seeing any fallout so that's great but I can also attest that to the formulation of these eyeshadows that I'm using today hmm. all right so my eyes are now open it's a little bit lifted I'm quite happy with that what do you think okay so now what I want to do is I'm gonna pick up this deeper shade here so this is the pigment on the brush head and I'm gonna use this to enhance my socket line and I'm just moving the brush back and forth oh look at that very easy and I'm also quite surprised on how well it's actually able to blend out the edges as soon as you start blending out the color you know very minimal action needed and again the brush head is actually very very soft I love it okay, and let me just blend that out okay now what I want to do is I'm going to pick up this deep like you know blue toned violet teeth purple eyeshadow from the myth palette of Lisa and I'm going to add this across my upper lash line now the reason why I'm doing this is because just so that it doesn't look too neutral too gray and this might work in just lifting the deepness that I am seeing here in the outer corners because like you know the eyeshadows are looking very pinky right now and what I like about the S1 right now is that because of its like you know the tips here it's actually almost rounded and quite fine so you're actually able to apply a much more detailed application of color here on the lash line and again if you are someone who has like um, sensitive eyelids this brush is actually amazing to you because I'm just so bummed out that this is a limited edition and it's not available anymore because this would be great for you to have okay I love that I was I'm glad that I was actually able to soften the color a bit okay so with the S3 brush I'm gonna pick up this color again and I'm gonna apply that into my socket line so that we can see how well this brush will add a gradation of color there and also of some intensity Ooh, that's actually nice it added a very nice hint of definition there which looks quite pretty I love it and now I'm just gonna pick up the S2 brush and I'm just going to try to blend it out and create a much more like you know lifted look almost cat eye to a certain degree but not too much I'm actually quite surprised with the S1 brush because I think this can really help you to create detail work on your eyes ah love it so let me just add a hint of color here so that we have like a nice like you know lifted look and according to the description you can also use this for the outer V portion of the eye if you want to have like you know, a much more deeper um, hint of color there and I find this to be true it's actually very easy to layer although the brush head is actually very small but if you have you know like a smaller real estate on your eyelid this is a nice brush to use like you know if you want to be very detailed about it and it's actually also able to blend out the color quite nicely okay so I'm just getting the blending brush now the S3 brush 
And I'm just going to buff out the edges and try to create a much more lifted look. Ah, that's very nice and very pretty. I love it. I love how soft and diffused the colors look, but it's also quite defined, if you know what I mean. Okay, so now I'm just removing whatever is on the brush head here on a microfiber towel because I'm just being playful right now. So I'm going to be picking up this pinky shade here from the TC Combo Le Cut Homme from Chanel. So we'll see if this brush head is able to pick up um, big gelée formulas. Let's see if it's going to apply a nice pop of color into the eyelid. Oh, it's actually able to apply the color but again because it's made of skrill here so it's gonna take you like you know a few swipes for you to in order to actually pick up the color and to be able to apply it on the eyelids and i'm gonna pick up this white shade here now i already brushed the brush head here on a microfiber towel just to remove whatever excess pigment is there and I'm going to apply this here on the inner corner just for some added highlight and, you know, a gradation of color. And with the blending brush, I'm going to pick up this, the deeper shade here on the Tissé Cambon um, Le Cat Ombre. And this is what I'm going to use just to add a much more deeper hint of color here. And the outer V portion. Yes, look at that. Ooh. So I'm building up the smokiness now. And there's also a certain shimmer here on this um, color. So that can also add a nice hint of drama into the eyelids. And it can also help to fade out the colors more. And I'm seeing that it's also able to intensify um, this color from the Myth palette of Lisa Eldridge. Now this is actually the first time that I'm playing around and mixing um, Lisa's eyeshadows with other eyeshadows from my collection. And so far, I am quite happy on how, like, you know, it performs and, and how well it, like, you know, blends out with other formulas and other brands. Okay, again, I'm just, like, you know, blending everything, trying to create a nice lift and making sure that our edges are well blended. All right, so now that my eyes are getting smokier and more dramatic, I love it. I'm going to be picking up this nice, like, you know, matte color again from the Claire Obscure palette of Chanel and I'm using the S1 brush here and I'm just going to tap this color here in the outer area of my eyelid here in my upper lashes and also here on my lower lashes just to deepen up the area and I am loving this brush for that like you know if you just want to get into like this very nice detailed work but you're already applying a very nice, well-blended color application on the eyelids. This brush is actually doing a very nice job. And you know, with me, like I like building up colors as necessary on the eyes. And sometimes you need smaller brushes for that. And I'm so glad that I was able to secure this. Because um, the thing is when... Oh, just a bee. Wah! Anyway, so um, because I have a hive here in the awning in front of my office, but anyway, I digress. So I'm actually quite glad that I was still able to secure this because when this brush set was actually launched, I was busy working and I couldn't like really purchase it while I was at work because um, internet connection in the studio was not that great. Because here, when I uh, make an online purchase, um, it, that purchase needs to be authenticated. And if the signal is not nice and like, you know, if the like text message doesn't come through into my phone, I couldn't give the um, authentication um, number so that my purchase will go through. So anywho, so I'm actually just very glad that I was still able to actually um, purchase this trio. And so far, I am loving this brush. I love it. Love, 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 love it. Okay, so I'm going to get the S3 now and I'm going to pick up one more dab of this color. And I'm just going to run it lightly across my crease just to blend out everything. I'll try to create a lift. Very nice and very pretty. And then what I want to do 
is I want to pick up this topper shade here from the Myth palette, which I actually love. It's so pretty. This color is so pretty. And I'm going to apply this on top of the pink eyeshadow that I applied from Chanel earlier just to have a much more nicer gradation of color and a much more nicer pop of light there because um, this color has very nice like, you know, shimmer in it and because it is on a transparent base so the color of this eyeshadow that I applied at the base will still be seen and it's not going to be affected and it creates this very nice you know depth of color on the eyes i love it so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to apply some mascara because i want to see how this eye looks like when my lashes are on hang on i have a new mascara that i want to try all right so i have been given this rms beauty uh, peptide volumizing okay let me repeat that so this is the rms straight up volumizing peptide mascara all day wear all day care so um this is actually a freebie from one of my purchases from beautylish um just over the holiday season and let me see if this will work nicely okay so the mascara one here is hmm, it looks to be quite chunky but then again this is only like on a tester on a sample size so at least this will give us an idea of what this mascara can do but so far i'm loving the mascara wand here this pooling and it's actually able to apply the mascara well into my lashes and it's also actually able to build it up and to feather it out it's also enhancing the curls of my lashes i love it let me just get into the lashes here and try to separate it love it this is a nice brush head for that okay it did add a little bit of some length and volume into my lashes which is actually very nice works well with the eyeshadow look that we have today okay so um i can see that there is a little bit of some fallout here on my upper cheeks as you guys can see but then again that's always expected when you are buffing out colors um on the like you know on the eyelid it will always happen and again i've said it before it's no big deal for me because i can always clean that out before i proceed with my makeup application like you know my concealer application foundation blush things like that so it's always a standard procedure so at least we know that um these brush heads actually do pick up a, quite a substantial amount of product and um they work extremely well with matte um, eyeshadow products but then again there are some matte eyeshadows so that they become very pigmented they don't have a lot of binders in them so um, maybe that's also why these brushes were able to pick that up and um, that's very evident with the s1 brush when i applied um, the color where was that when i applied this color from the claire obscure uh, palette from chanel and i applied it here on my lower lashes um, when i started doing this eye look and I was so shocked on how pigmented it actually laid the product um, on my eyelids. So I was quite surprised by that. So um, now I know that I can I that I have to be careful as well with mattes. Now for shimmers, they prove to be um, quite a challenge because they will not pick up um, a ton of the glitter in the pan because after all like you know eyeshadow products that have glitters in them have more binders so that it clings on to the glitters and it doesn't fall down so this is actually a great activity for me because it just helps me to get to know these three eyeshadow brushes and what they can do and what i can use them for and um so far i'm enjoying them and i just feel so sad that um these brushes are only a limited edition because I think it can be a nice like, you know, addition into your um, brush kit. And um, I do love this blending brush here, the S3. I think this is a very nice brush. And I'm still, again, quite surprised on how well it blends out uh, the colors on the eyelid, especially that the design of the brush head here is not your typical blending brush because it's more tapered, it's more straight, it doesn't really fluff at the tips. So um, I'm still quite happy with the ability of this um, brush head so that's that and this brush here the s2 brush i think this is a very typical lay down brush especially with like you know with the brush head design things like that and its ability to pick up pigment um but basing on this activity i would primarily use the s2 for matte eyeshadows because this picked up 
pigments extremely well and it was also able to blend it out nicely on the eyes. Now, uh, will I use this for glittery eyeshadows? Yes, but only if I do not want to apply a very like, you know, full blast of glitters on the eyelid. But if I want to add a very nice hint of glitter, I would use this because again, like, you know, this is a squirrel brush head, so it will not apply and pick up a ton of glittery eyeshadows because you need a much more stronger brush head for that to be able to like you know go into the pan and then go through the binders and actually pick it up. Now what's great about this is because this is made of squirrel hair so it's actually very soft and it will not scatter or disturb or flick a ton of glitters into the upper cheek because it doesn't have like you know the springiness um, of a let's say a synthetic brush or like let's say um, a very fluffy uh, worker type of a brush because that one will actually really flick um, glitter out on your eyelid. So at least now that we're doing this activity we get an idea on what we can use these eyeshadow brushes for. So I guess that's my video for today. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed me showing you how I would use uh, the Sonia G Traditions Holiday Trio set. Did I get the name right? Yeah, the Traditions Holiday Trio. So if you have any more questions about how I would use the Traditions Holiday Trio and like, you know, any of the other products that I use today, please leave them down at the comments box and let's have a conversation about it. And well, one other thing, if you do have Sonia's Traditions Holiday Trio, please let me know which is your favorite brush to use and what you use it for. Maybe I would also learn something from you. All right, so I'm going to let you go now. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here and I hope that you're having a good day wherever you are. Bye!